احنا هنستنى بس الساعه 11 ان شاء الله هنبتدي عشان uh, today I'm going to discuss um, certain part of breaking bad news uh, it is related to um, resuscitation or not ventilation or not end of life care and uh, organ donation uh, these are certain topics uh, that constitute important part of the exam uh, and uh, part of the difficult scenarios that you have to know how to tackle in a proper way and be organized or have certain point to talk about uh, not to lose time um, in um, nonsensible talk uh, so I'm going to start my talk uh, right now uh, Uh, I'm going to start with uh, do not attempt resuscitation. Uh, when you have a scenario of uh, to resuscitate or not, how are you going to tackle uh, this scenario? Uh, first of all, you should explain, usually you are talking to a patient relative. Uh, so after starting the introduction, you should um, confirm that uh, the patient, the relative is the patient next of kin. Um, or if the patient conscious or competent, assume you took permission from the patient to talk about his condition. Sometimes you talk about do not attempt resuscitation with the patient himself. Like for example, patient with um, advanced uh, COPD, um, and you are talking to him about um, the possibility of ventilation or not, and um, um, he enter into organ damage, um, and you consider the possibility of resuscitation, or not if indicated. Uh, the majority of scenarios, you talk to the relative, not to the patient. But sometimes, again, you talk to the patient himself. So uh, you start your introduction. Um, then the second step, which is checking the knowledge uh, of the uh, relative or the patient uh, by telling him uh, how much you know about um, Mr. Um, and name the patient condition. Uh, or if you are talking to the patient himself, how much you know about your condition. What is your expectation? Um, what do you think um, is going to happen? Um, then um, ask him if he want to know everything about the condition right now. Uh, and then enter into step three, which is uh, the main bulk of the scenario. You start by saying um, that you would like to discuss the condition of the um, patient and future strategy uh, of management. Um, you should explain the condition in simple way. Do not assume um, a relevant scenario. For example, patient with a road traffic accident, multiple trauma. Don't say to him he has a brain bleed or uh, died from um, inoperable uh, hemorrhage. You don't know what happened exactly. So just be strict to the scenario which you read. Uh, don't assume a scenario uh, from your own imagination. Um, give him uh, a briefing for the treatment which is given now and explain to the patient uh, that the con or the relative that the condition is critical and um, i'm sorry to tell you that at some point we may need to uh, we may be faced by a certain situation in which his heart stopped bre uh, beating uh, in such condition we have um, two options to resuscitate him or not to resuscitate him uh, I know it is a sort of difficult decision, so I have to discuss this further with you. Uh, before starting discussion, let me uh, assume, assure, assure or ask you, uh, have the patient, Mr. Fulain, uh, left any advanced directive regarding this issue? Have you ever discussed with him uh, an issue related to this? Do you think in his condition what he... Uh, uh, sorry? Uh, what he prefer, then uh, start to mention to him uh, that uh, asking about the premorbid of the patient. Uh, was he enjoying his life um, after explaining, sorry, the condition first um, and that uh, despite all the measure given, uh, he shows no improvement. Um, and um, let me ask you about the previous condition prior to the admission. Was he enjoying his life? What about the daily activity? Was he able to do self-care? Uh, what about his general health? Otherwise, mood, 
what about uh, support at home who is living with him who is giving support to him is he able to um, move around and take care after himself and uh, do um, any sort of activity um, usually such patients um, are living miserable life um, this in case of the patient have multi-organ disease for a long time um, and you are now taking a decision for not to, res to res resuscitate. In another situation, the patient was generally good, uh, not complaining of any problem, but have, for example, road traffic accident or um, acute uh, brain bleed uh, or sudden condition that cause um, him, his condition to deteriorate suddenly. And unfortunately, this condition is irreversible. The medical decision is not to resuscitate him. In such condition, you are going to tell the relative that the patient um, condition right now is not going to improve. Uh, and uh, assessing his medical situation, uh, the medical team decided that you are go we are going just to prolong his suffering by um, uh, extending his life. So we are going to give him all the medical treatment we are not going to stop any medical treatment but at the same time uh, um, regarding the issue of resuscitation the medical team sees it is not the proper decision to take how do you feel about this it express his emotion uh, again it is important to ask about advanced directive if you didn't ask about it before um, and important to explain that the resuscitation order will be reassessed on the time of need if the patient condition show improvement. So it is not final decision unless um, uh, on the time of need. Uh, inform, uh, tell the relative that you are going to inform other member of multidisciplinary team to keep the patient away of pain and suffering and to keep his dignity. Um, that are going to help your patient. He will feel no pain, uh, he will um, not suffer. Um, and stress on that, he will receive all the treatment uh, except for resuscitation. Uh, if you are speaking to the patient, it is important as a legal issue to um, uh, tell him that he has to complete do not attempt resuscitation for uh, and sign it. This is very important uh, and how to approach um, the case of not resuscitation. Not uh, to ventilate or not, the approach is the same. You inform the patient that the condition is deteriorating. We are now in, um, um, at a point that um, his condition is not showing any response to treatment and not expected to improve. Uh, otherwise, uh, any further treatment would um, carry no more benefit. Uh, so at the time, he may stop breathing and he may need to, to um, assist his breathing by um, lung machine. And you start to explore the pros and cons of ventilation um, or not, uh, and ask about the pre-morbid, as I mentioned, um, the social activity, um, long-term oxygen therapy, and admission in the hospital, and other issues that I'm going to discuss at point, uh, and then accept Explain to the patients that you are going to the relative, sorry, that you are going to give him uh, all treatment except for ventilation. Okay. Uh, this is the first issue to resuscitate or not and to ventilate or not. The second issue is brain stem death. Uh, some of the scenario uh, you have to discuss with the patient brain stem death. And in such condition, it is meant to discuss further the issue of organ donation, especially if the patient is young age and healthy, uh, or even uh, middle-aged uh, with no disease. Uh, so there are certain points you have to stress during your conversation. First of all, there is no signs of improvement. Uh, he didn't regain consciousness despite a stopping sedation. How can I know that you stop the sedation um, despite his not mentioned in the scenario? Because the criteria of brain stem death necessitate that uh, the patient is not under sedation or under metabolic comas. So you should, st you should stop sedation before assessing brain stem tests. Uh, explain the reason for his um, uh, asking for this test. 
measure the brain bleed or whatever according to the scenario. Uh, that caused irreversible brain damage uh, and the vital parts of the brain stopped functioning. And this will not be regained again. He will never wake up. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm sorry to tell you that. Uh, he, he is now uh, actually dead. I know it is hard for you to hear about that, but I should be, um, I should declare this for you. Uh, he is just relaying on the machine for breathing. Uh, in such condition, uh, please mute the mic. Uh, in such condition, we do some tests uh, to check, uh, to confirm brain stem death. Uh, this test done by two consultants, uh, which are not part of the treating team. These are items you must mention in your conversation. Um, after assessing this test, he is pronouncing dead. And uh, the time of declaration of death will be the time of the brainstem test. He is kept on the machine for certain issues that I have to discuss with you. Uh, we cannot keep him on the machine for a long time, uh, but just um, to... Um, uh, discuss certain issues with you, which is uh, organ donation. And then you start discussing organ donation. Uh, Despite being dead, there is no damage to his organs. Uh, as a doctor, it is my responsibility to uh, discuss with you organ donation. Uh, ask your patient, is, do you think this is a proper time to discuss this issue? Uh, clarify if there is any objection regarding uh, the um, uh, family or religious objection. And if the patient have uh, a donation card or discuss the issue of donation before with his family, or even express his wish to donate. Uh, start to explain to him the benefit of donation, that you are going to inspire his soul in the life of others, you are going to help others who are suffering much. Uh, then uh, explain the procedure of donation. Transplantation team will talk to the family, uh, we ensure there is no cancer or blood-borne pugs. Uh, there will be no pain because he is already uh, dead. Uh, if the relative asks uh, for time to think, tell him, I appreciate. It should be hard for you uh, and appreciate how hard this time for you. Uh, uh, it is not necessary to take the decision right now. I'll be nearby. Um, why don't you take some time to uh, consider and check the idea uh, with the family, and then we can arrange another meeting within a couple of hours, okay? These are the main points that you have to discuss in these three, um, actually, uh, difficult scenarios. Um, in these scenarios, you have to know the items that you have to tackle because it is very uh, stressing scenarios if not properly managed. You can find yourself losing time uh, in debate with the relative uh, and uh, running around yourself without achieving um, progress if you don't have a fixed plan in your mind. Uh, another topic that I'm going to point to is palliative care. Palliative care uh, is a kind of care that is given to um, non-treated, uh, untreated advanced disease. Um, they are uh, typically administered in hospital or at home or other care facilities like nursing home, hospice care, or whatever. Um, in this type of care, you fulfill uh, care for the patient socially, psychologically, financially, uh, spiritually even, uh, to keep him living as good life as possible. Uh, so if he is going to die, it is important to die with dignity. It is the patient right to die with dignity, free of pain, free of suffering. 
So you should uh, provide support to the patient as well as his family. Encourage help to the patient uh, to live active life as possible. As uh, in one scenario, uh, the patient has advanced cancer and he was concerned about uh, traveling around the world um, over the coming uh, few days that remaining for him. It is important to encourage this as long as this does not carry risk for the patient himself. Um, address the need for the pay of the patient and his family um, through multidisciplinary team. Important if you are talking about cancer, advanced cancer, to mention the Macmillan team. Macmillan team. And if you are talking about advanced disease or patient who cannot cope at home, to mention the hospice care. So don't mention these two terminology. In end stage cancer, Macmillan team. And uh, in uh, a, a terminal disease or patient who cannot cope at home, hospice care. Again, this care can be given at hospital, can be given at home, uh, can be delivered by a social nurse, uh, can be delivered by family member trained uh, or by the nurses. Um, it is appropriate, this type of palliative care, appropriate for end stage patient. Uh, uh, for any stage of illness, sorry, uh, whether he's going to die or not. This is more broad to term. Uh, this explains the different type of care, palliative care for all diseases which does not have um, curable treatment. Um, we use this, the palliative approach, as I mentioned. Uh, for life-limiting illness, it is to uh, optimize the quality of life, maximize community support, early symptom management, and advanced care planning. End-of-life care, that the part uh, at the beginning of the lecture, uh, when the patient has only weeks, two months, or, or months to leave, uh, palliative and medical treatment are given, ongoing support, hospice care, uh, and receipt and caregiver re re relief, which is very important to consider the family, the caregivers. Uh, last days or our care, in this condition, we don't give medical treatment. We just uh, give uh, pain and symptom management, management psychological and uh, social support, as well as spiritual support. You can um, involve uh, a chaplain or the um, um, a religious um, uh, men uh, who can give him support, Macmillan team, or something like this. Uh, so this is the different level of care in um, uncurable patient uh, with advanced disease. Uh, and you have to know the different uh, types of them and the meaning of different types of them. Um, there are different scenarios which tackle these um, uh, issues including, for example, patient with end-stage renal failure, which had a stroke. And she mentioned before um, uh, she had her last stroke uh, that if she developed a new stroke, she would like to stop dialysis. She mentioned that to her nurses, the dialysis nurse. And unfortunately, she developed a new stroke. She's now um, lost capacity, not conscious on the ICU, and uh, your task to discuss with her son about the condition of his mom and the futility of the treatment and discussing his, um, her wish to stop dialysis and this, uh, that her medical, uh, her um, wish is going with the medical team decision. Uh, another scenario which came also in the exam, a condition in which uh, you, um, the patient underwent dialysis and he is now refusing to continue the dialysis. Despite this life-threatening condition, if he stopped the dialysis because his life is dependent on this machine, but he is refusing to do. So don't uh, spend your time trying to uh, convince him because you have to respect his autonomy. You should explore why he wants to stop the dialysis and does he understand the sequel of stopping the dialysis on his life? and um, that this may put his life at risk um, and um, actually he may die and explain to him the palliative care. Again, another scenario which may come 
patient with advanced stage cancer, metastatic cancer, or patient with unknown primary and uh, coming with multiple metastases, we are going to talk about palliative care. So in uh, all these scenarios, you are going to tackle the palliative care. Uh, also, palliative care needed in patients who are um, decided not to resuscitate them, not to ventilate them. Okay, so in summary, we discuss uh, the end of life care, uh, do not attempt resuscitation items, uh, to ventilate or not, and uh, uh, organ donation uh, with brain stem death, and the different type of uh, end of life care. This is important slide show the difference between palliative care and hospice care. Palliative care aimed um, at anyone who has been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. Uh, palliative care helps to improve or maintain the quality of life, reduce illness symptoms, and recent findings uh, suggest that cancer patients who receive palliative care alongside standard treatment can live longer. This is palliative care. While in hospice care, it is mostly aimed for uh, at patients who have been diagnosed with terminal illness. Uh, so here, we illness. Hospice care aims to provide uh, the patient with dignifying uh, pain-free death. So uh, it can be carried at home or uh, by other specialized nurse or so. Uh, so I'm going to stop here for a few seconds and uh, receive your comment or questions. Uh, can I ask a question, Dr. Amunun? Yes, please. Uh, in, in some scenarios, uh, for uh, like uh, the brain stem death, sometimes they are not mentioning uh, the organ donation. Some our our colleagues they face such scenario in the exam, and uh, when he try to uh, to talk about organ donation, uh, it's um, like he asking if this is the right time to ask about that. So. Uh, mm -hmm. This is perfect. Yes, doctor. Mm. Uh, this is perfect question first. Uh, when you have to ask about organ donation or to tackle the issue of organ donation, uh, you have to differentiate between two types of scenarios. The first scenario, uh, you have uh, a scenario of patient who has been uh, declared dead or brain stem dead, and there is a clear task to inform the relative about his uh, patient death and discuss with him the issue of organ donation. And usually it is written if appropriate, if appropriate, despite is your task. Because you have to finish first the issue of uh, death, then ask your patient, as I mentioned, do you think it is the proper time to discuss the issue of organ donation? As a medical doctor, it's my role to discuss with you certain issue related to organ donation. Do you think it is the proper time to discuss this issue? Why this question? Because sometimes the uh, surrogate or the uh, real relative reaction to uh, the um, uh, declaration of death uh, is anger or denial. So it is not proper at all. Or extreme sadness, briefness. So, uh, uh, grievance. Sorry. So it is not proper at all to discuss the issue of organ donation at this issue, at these uh, circumstances. You have first to uh, give the empathy and uh, um, give the proper reaction to the patient and offer condolence. And then after you finish this, you take permission. Do you think there's a proper time to discuss this issue? Right. If this is your task, if it is not your task and the patient have, uh, for example, a patient with um, end organ failure. End organ failure uh, in itself is a contraindication for organ donation. Um, uh, for example, patient uh, with septic shock and ended with multi-organ failure. Uh, but in the other hand, patient, for example, young age or middle age uh, who has been treated with hypertension uh, and he was on anticoagulant for AF. This is a real scenario, period exam scenario. Uh, and he sustained um, brain bleed. 
he was previously healthy. So um, in this condition, after um, declaring death to the relative, uh, ask the patient, uh, ask the relative if it is the proper time to discuss organ donation or not. Um, have I answered your question or make it clear for you, Doctora? Yeah. You don't have to tackle this issue if not mentioned in your task, except after making uh, the death declaration uh, and empathy and inform the patient this will not, um, uh, I'm going to end your funeral uh, arrangement uh, and help you in um, everything. You finish this issue completely. After you finish it, you can discuss the issue of organ donation. If it is not mentioned in your task, but if it is mentioned in your task, again, you, uh, uh, you will find it written in the task like this and discuss the issue of organ donation if appropriate. So this uh, discussion depends on the patient uh, or a relative, sorry, reaction to the breaking bad news. Imagine a patient, um, we are going to do a scenario right now and I'm going to uh, re-ask you your question after we finish. Okay, yes. but have I answered your question? Yes, yes. Okay, Thank perfect. You Thank you. Any other question? Doctor? Yes? Uh, just regarding the resuscitation and the word resuscitate, is it jargon? Yani how I will explain resuscitation in a simple words? Yes, um, you explain that at certain time. Um, I'm sorry to tell you that, that the condition of your relative has been deteriorating despite all uh, medical measures uh, taken, uh, but he shows no response. Um, I'm sorry to tell you that, but at certain point, his heart may stop uh, beating. Mm. Uh, and in such condition, uh, we have to depend on machine to maintain his breathing as well as his heart beating, which is called resuscitation. Mm. Okay, that's so why I will we, accept uh, the procedure, then I can use the word. Yes. After that. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you use any medical terminology, uh, whether in diagnosis, whether in procedure, uh, investigation, uh, like um, CT, it is familiar for us CT, but for the patient, he doesn't know what is CT. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Endoscopy, a colonoscopy, whatever. You have to explain what, what do you mean uh, by the medical terminology. Mm -hmm. Any other okay. question? Any other question? Okay, go ahead, Doctora. Okay. Um, I'm going now to discuss with you a scenario. Uh, so who is going to take the scenario? I will do it. I mean, uh, can I know who I'm talking to? Uh, I'm okay. Dr. Muhammad, ahlan bik. Welcome. Okay, uh, can you see the scenario? Uh, no. Oh. Okay. Uh. Mr. Mahmoud, 32 years old, a civil engineer, uh, who has been admitted in the ICU with major cerebral bleed after road tra traffic accident. Um, sorry. This condition wasn't. Um, I, yes. Uh, this is another case uh, appearing the, the, on the screen. Uh, yeah, now no, this is the case, Mr. Mahmoud. So, so sorry mm -hmm. to proceed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. His condition was not improving, and the brain stem test was done and proved to be brain stem dead. Your task to explain, explain the condition to his father, Mr. Ali, uh, and discuss the issue of organ donation if appropriate. Okay. How many minutes do I have? Uh, you have uh, 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mohamed, you're going to Yes. Okay. I will calculate the time, don't worry. Just, uh, you have uh, two minutes to think about when you are ready, tell me.
Yes. Dr. Mohammed ready? Yes. Can we start? Yes, I can start. Okay. Okay. Um, hello. Hello. Um, um, I'm Dr. Mohammed, one of uh, the medical team that taking care of your son. May I confirm that you are Mr. Ali, the father of Mr. Mohammed? Yes, doctor. Um, uh, I would like to welcome you and thank you for coming today. Thank so, um, we are here to discuss uh, um, the condition of your son. And um, before we start, I would like to ask you if you want to call anyone to attend with you this meeting. Um, no, thank you. Okay. So, um, let me see, Professor, how much uh, do you know about your son condition? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, my son have been admit, has been admitted uh, to the hospital uh, since two weeks now uh, after a traffic accident. Uh, since admission, uh, I didn't see any improvement of his condition. Uh, doctor told me that he um, has some brain bleed. Uh, yes. I'm actually anxious why he is not improving. Uh, you know, doctor, uh, my son wedding was planned to be within uh, a couple of weeks. Um, you cannot imagine um, how we feel in the family. We are looking forward for his recovery. So I hope you carry some good news for me. Um, I appreciate your feelings and I'm really sorry for what happened uh, to your son. And um, just uh, I would like to tell you that I'm afraid that uh, I don't have a good news for you today. Oh. You mean his condition is not improving, doctor? Unfortunately, I'm afraid to tell you that uh, his condition is um, really bad. And the brain bleed was a major one in uh, um, actually it affects the function of the brain. Uh, to extend that, the brain is uh, some important uh, sites of the brain that uh, control the, his breathing and heart beating already not functioning. And... Um, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, now he's totally depending on the machines, okay, for his breathing and for and for his heart to beat. And um, he has been examined by two senior doctors, okay, a specialized team to decide um, whether his brain is functioning properly or not. And they declared that um, he has a brain death, unfortunately. Brain death. And, what does this mean, doctor? Don't worry about uh, it. Do you mean that my son is going to be kept on this machine for the rest of his life? Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that the term brain death means technically that your son is not alive at the moment. And he's totally depending on the machines at this moment. I'm really sorry to tell you. Oh, sorry, doctor. I didn't got your point. What do you mean by not alive? He is breathing. His heart is beating. Uh, so, what do you mean by not alive? As I told you, um, the, in the brain, 
there is certain centers that control the breathing of, uh, uh, of any human being and the heartbeat. And in the case of your son, because of this uh, major hemorrhage, okay, this massive bleed, it affects these areas and make it irreversibly uh, not functioning. Um, so uh, technically now your, your son is breathing through these machines. Not, this is not his own breathing. And even his heart is working by by the drugs that are that are connected to, uh, to his uh, blood circulation. I'm so you are going that. to keep him on this machine for the rest of his life, doctor? Actually, uh, you are telling me that his 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 breathing and heart beating dependent on this machine. So he's yes. going to be kept on this machine for the rest of his life. Um, uh, l let me tell you and explain to you more. Um, since uh, he's uh, now depending uh, totally on the, on the machines for the breathing and, and heart beating, this, uh, this situation will not be forever, definitely, okay? Uh, because there is no quality of life and he's technically, he's not alive, he's dead. <laughs> why you are keeping him on the machine if he is dead? Actually, that's why uh, I called you to attend this meeting. Because I, I, I want to discuss with you some uh, uh, one uh, issue, if you allow me. Um, yes, I know this, sure. is too much, this is too much for you, and this is frustrating and shocking to receive this news. And and uh, me, I want you also to. Uh, <laughs> I want Doctor, to I told you that his wedding was planned to be after two weeks. His mother is, and his fiance uh, is waiting for his recovery. I'm really sorry you are now that. telling me that he's dead. Do you? Like, do you want to talk to me about stopping this machine? I don't think you can do. You are not going to kill my son. I'm not killing your son. Actually, you did whatever it takes to, to keep him alive. Yeah. And, I'm, and I appreciate your feelings, and I'm sorry for, for what happened to your son. And he was young, and he has a bright future, and has going, he was going to get married. But unfortunately, due to this uh, road traffic accident and the the brain bleed that led us to this point. I'm sorry to, to tell you that. So, if, if you if you allow me to proceed further, if you are comfortable, uh, and yeah, you want me to proceed further for uh, for the issue I want to discuss with you, I will start. But if this is too much for you, can arrange another meeting to speak. I just want to know if he is now dead. Why are you are keeping him in the machine? That's why I'm, uh, as I told you, I could well, Why you didn't declare his death? Yes. Actually, at the time that uh, the team declared that he has a brain death, they, they, they declared his death, actually, okay? But uh, we are keeping him on the machine because I want to discuss with you one issue. Um, 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 having a, a brain death doesn't mean that his other organs are not fun uh, uh, functioning well. Actually, his organs now are functioning, still functioning. Okay, but, uh, but uh, due to the brain death, um, as you know, we declared him dead. So I want uh, to, to ask if he, uh, if he ever mentioned before during his life uh, that if, if he was interested, it, uh, he was interested in organ donation or before. It was How just was a life? conversation with his dad, uh, with me one time. He mentioned that after his death, when he got aged, you know, uh, he would yes. like to help others by donating his organs. He didn't expect to die in such situation or such age. You know, he has a very bright future. Uh, I even cannot think about, do you want to stop the life of my son to give his organ to others? Actually, is that what you want? I appreciate your feelings. I know this is really hard at this time. But uh, if he expressed these feelings, to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, donate his organs. Actually, this will make him alive among us. Even as of his death, he will be alive and he will, he will, he will make other uh, people alive and will, you know, at, at least he will save another life. This is his wish, as you said before. And actually, he will save another life if you, if you don't mind, if you, if you have no uh, objection about that and other family members has no objection about that. It's better to fulfill his wish. 
it was actually you now his organs are it was just part. wish doctor he didn't expect to die this way and i cannot imagine that uh, the the body of my son would be divided into pieces and that his organs will be kept in others body no doctor uh, it is very difficult for me i cannot accept this ever i really appreciate your feelings and i want to tell you that he will not be the trigger at all okay if you uh, if you if you approve this we are, uh, we are going to take his organs and they will do a very tiny um uh, uh you know that they will a very tiny cut and the stitches will be very neat he will not be this trigger don't worry that he will be disfigured or by taking his organs he will not be in, in a good shape okay and i sure that will not de delay the funeral of your son also okay yes so, Please think about this, and um, I will give you time to, to, to think about this and, 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 and to discuss this with uh, his family. I know this is so hard, but uh, I'm sorry also to deliver well, this bad news for you at this time, and, and this is overwhelming, I know that, I can feel that, but we need to discuss that, because now the time is running, and the earliest, the, the decision, the, the, the order will be in a better shape and, and better health. So. How do you feel about it? I'm not feeling comfortable toward this, doctor. I think I have to reconsider. Uh, Definitely, you have the right and the time. It is very difficult. You should appreciate my feeling, his of course uh, I mother it. feeling. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it's difficult. Really. It's really difficult. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry to hear this bad news for you. But please, uh, I will arrange a, a, a near, uh, um, another meeting with you. Maybe yes, tomorrow. Doctor, okay, two minutes remaining. Okay, so uh, would you please what, uh, tell me what's your concern? I'm concerned about uh, something, doctor. If I refuse to uh, this issue of organ donation, are you going to keep my son on this machine or not? Okay, before addressing this, uh, addressing your concern, uh, may I ask you if your son left any advanced directed message or any written wish before for this organ no. donation? No? No. Okay. No. And, okay. Um, actually, uh, if you refuse in this case, um, we are not going to keep him on, on, on the machines. I'm sorry to tell you that because technically, as, you, as I told you, your son is dead. So keeping him uh, on uh, the machine will not he will not have any quality of life, and actually, he cannot even hear you when you are talking to him. He's dead, actually. And now he's only on these machines. So we are not keeping him on this machine forever. I'm keeping him on this machine just to, 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 uh, to ask if you can allow this organ donation issue. And if yes, you allow doctor, it, another issue. Uh, if I decided not to donate his organs, are you going to help me in the funeral arrangements? I don't want to delay this. Definitely, I, I'm telling you, even if you, uh, uh, if you agree for, for the organ donation, this will be as quick as possible. There will not be any further delay in, in his funeral. So be assured that uh, there is no delay. And as I told you, there will not be any disfiguring in his shape for, for this uh, organ donation. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Can I, 12 minutes finished. Uh, okay. Just I want you to summarize before you finish. Um, okay, in summary, uh, this uh, um, um, young gentleman... Um, no, no, no. I mean to the uh, father. To the father, okay. To the yes. father. Uh, in summary, Sum your uh, yeah, in summary um, uh, your son has a major uh, brain bleed, okay, that uh, lead to, led to uh, brain death that was confirmed by senior doctors, okay. And uh, uh, and he's now kept on machines. He's technically dead. He's declared that he's now living on machines. And we are uh, we discussed the issue of uh, organ donation. And um, yes. we are yeah. And as I told you, this will not cause any delay in his funeral. He will, it will not yes. it will not cause any de uh, delay or any funeral or any disfigurement of, of his uh, body image. Okay, and he will not feel any pain during this. Thank you, doctor. So uh, I'm looking forward for your answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed. You did it perfect. The most important things that okay. you did is the level of empathy. 
and the understanding of their feeling, the actions, you did it in a very good way. Uh, despite I cannot see you, but I can feel it, which is very important in such scenario. Uh, yeah. Dear doctors, don't consider communication is uh, like lecture. It is not a tool. Uh, number one, the reactions, the way you give the information, the way you check the understanding of the patient is very important. Uh, I have some comments that I'm going to mention. First of all, you have to ask if the uh, father is the next of kin to the patient or not. Here, I will stop for a second and mention who is the next of kin. Next of kin uh, is uh, the partner. It may be the um, husband or wife or the girlfriend or boyfriend, the partner who is living with him at home. Yes. Uh, yes, second, fa uh, kids, father or mother. So uh, it is not meant because uh, you are talking to the father that he is the next of kin. So you have to ask him if he is the next of kin. Because one of the scenario, you are taking, uh, talking to the father and uh, his um, partner was abroad. And she okay. asked, uh, the father asked to delay the decision after uh, his wife come from abroad uh, mm -hmm. of organ donation. So it's very important such scenario to make sure uh, as I mentioned in the first lecture, um, uh, the first step, if you are not talking to the patient, make sure that you are talking to the next of kin of the patient is not conscious or not competent. Sure. Uh, you tackle the scenario in a very good way. Uh, I'm going just to revise the items uh, to stress on. Um, you mentioned there is no signs of improvement and the cause is major uh, brain ble bleeding after the road traffic accident. Uh, he didn't regain his consciousness despite uh, stopping sedation, which pushed us or made us uh, do the brain stem test. Do you have any idea about this brain stem test? These are tests carried by two consultants, not on a part of the treating team. This a statement is very important. Why? Because it signifies that I'm uh, not bored of uh, treating such an improving patient. They are not part of the treating physician. Uh, so it is important to stress on this point. They are not part of the treating team. Uh, they did the uh, test on separate, two separate occasions. And unfortunately, he shows no improvement, uh, no response. Sorry. Uh, so um, he was... Uh, declared as brain stem dead. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that this means that your son is actually now dead. And do the golden silence. Express his emotion and if there is no reaction, you should ask him, I appreciate it should be hard for you. Uh, would you tell me how do you feel right now? Uh, I, I, I actually, all the medical team feels uh, sorry toward his, um, um, this uh, end. We all hope that he um, improved, but unfortunately, uh, this is out of our hands. Uh, and leave time for the father to express his emotion. Even if he started to cry, uh, give him tissue. Uh, and then appreciate, I appreciate this hard time for you. Uh, but actually we have, uh, he is keep breathing and his heart is still beating because of We have to stop this machine because uh, we cannot maintain him on the machine while dead. The machine is not prolonging his life. It is not supporting his life. Uh, he is actually dead. You should declare this point very clearly to uh, stop argument and stop wasting time. And yes. on the same time, in, in an empathetic way, which is very important. Uh, by this, we finish the issue of declaring the death. Give him uh, a few seconds or minute to express his emotions, then ask him, as a doctor, it is my uh, job to um, discuss certain issues with you. That's why we are keeping him on the machine. Uh, it is related to organ donation. I know how sensitive or how hard is this issue to discuss right now in such a situation. But um, uh, it's my role as a doctor. So I'm sorry to discuss this with you. Do you think it's the proper time to discuss it with you? Uh, 
if he say yes it's okay you should uh, you start to explain the organ donation as you did you did perfectly uh, despite he died his organ is well working well um, now we are going to um, if you agree um, let me ask you first if he expressed his wish about donating his organs ever or uh, had organ donation card uh, so um, if there are any objections whether religious or family objection or the patient himself was objecting about organ donation if no objections uh, then uh, uh, proceed further to explain the organ donation um, in such condition we are going to uh, arrange a meeting with the organ donation team they will explain to you further uh, and at the same time I stress on certain point there is no disfigurement uh, it is like surgical wound uh, no delay in funeral arrangement I'll do all the um, help needed to finish it early and also uh, I assure you he will feel no pain or suffer uh, because he is already dead uh, uh, the lives of others that he's going to see imagine how many people you can change their life give this, uh, or even give them life you can inspire the life of your son in their Yes, uh, okay. Are you following? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it is interrupted. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, if you agree for that, uh, there will be no pain, no suffering, uh, no disfigurement, uh, and uh, this will not be delaying the funeral arrangement. So, how do you feel about this? If you still refuse, if you still refuse, uh, then uh, tell him uh, tell him that uh, why don't you think about you can uh, reconsider and discuss it with other family members I will be around for a couple of hours because you cannot keep him uh, on the machine for a long time we have to take the decision uh, I appreciate it may be difficult for you to take decision right now and there is You can uh, reconsider discussing again with you. Uh, uh, important to close, so summarize. I'm sorry uh, for the bad news. Uh, news I he is now uh, dead, and we are keeping him for the machine till you consider the issue of organ donation and uh, we'll be happy to hear from you if you accept this uh, so uh, if the parent or the father is going to go home do you want me to arrange someone to drive you home this is a form of offering help yes okay uh, so any questions uh, yes, sir. Um, so you mentioned first uh, the issue of uh, if he's the next of kin or not. So yes. uh, in this case, uh, the father, as you said, is not the, the next of kin of the patient. Uh, no, no, this, no. Uh, uh, he uh, may be the next of kin uh, because okay. he is just, it is ju she's just his fiancée and uh, you have to ask him. You have to ask him if, if he is living with his parents, then the father is the next of kin. Yeah, I understand. But uh, uh, let's assume that the father is, is not the, the next of kin uh, of the patient. So uh, does that uh, change the approach? Uh, you should uh, discuss with him the scenario as you did. But if he is not the next of kin, 
you have to ask him about the uh, next of kin and when she or he will be available to discuss these issues with him. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned to you, some scenario came before uh, and the uh, next of kin was his wife and she was approved. Should ask him when she's going to come. Uh, in few hours, it's okay. You can wait. Otherwise, well, this is declaring death. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other okay, questions? Thank you. thank you. Um, if the patient has organ donation card. Uh, is it your right to uh, tell him, um, I'm sorry, but I'm obliged by law to take his organ because he has a donation card? Is it your right? Um, um, I really don't know, but uh, does because it, it, mm -hmm. it's a donation card. Is it considered like a, a legal uh, document? Documents, yes. Uh, donation card is a legal document. But okay. uh, there are some uh, many debates about the issue of organ donation right now. Uh, they didn't solve even, so you cannot solve it in simple session. Uh, so, um, despite being a legal document, you mentioned that uh, you should respect the patient's yes. patient relative feeling, because right. it is said that uh, if the patient himself despite signing organ donation card, if he himself know that um, uh, the situation or circumstances at which he's going to uh, die, uh, he wouldn't um, underwent this organ donation card. You understand me? Yeah, so I still have yes. to explain to the family and respect the relation of that. I cannot... Uh, uh, yes, you should respect their uh, will at the end because uh, it is stated that the dead body belongs to the family. I okay. would add uh, another issue here. Um, in 2019, this year, few months back, two months back, mm -hmm. the NHS announced that uh, all the patient, all the dead patient, uh, are considered for donation except those who sign not to donate card not to donate, yani, the issue now, not to sign a donation card, but the standard to donate from all that person, except who sign a paper uh, refusing donation. Uh, despite being stated, you are not allowed to mention in the exam or tackle this issue because the standard in the exam that you uh, for, uh, follow the guidelines which have been uh, for uh, uh, accepted for the last uh, four years, so you cannot mention this right now to get out of any debate. Clear? Okay. Uh, can we tell the father that he is the only uh, he is only on machine till his decision about organ donation? You should. Yes. 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 Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, doctor. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Uh, about uh, this figuring. About? To, about this figuring. This figuring. This figurement, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, we're going to take his uh, organs. Yes. Which, uh, obviously, we're going to disfigure him. Uh, this is like surgical operation. It will okay, not cause any that. disfigurement. Yes, it is not disfiguring. You are not going, as people uh, understand, cut his body into parts. Uh, it is like surgery. You do nephrectomy, you do uh, pancreatectomy, uh, hepatectomy, whatever, uh, even corneal uh, removal uh, with surgical incision, clean incision. There should be no... Um, uh, uh, disfigurement, no bleeding, uh, the body should be uh, treated in a well way, keeping the dignity of the dead body. Okay. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I Any other question? Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, are we going to take the donations after we take them for the ventilation or during his ventilation? Sorry? After or during? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, see, uh, this is issue out of our scope. But anyhow, uh, all our uh, organs have uh, uh, tissue life after death. And for example, the kidney can live for six hours after death, uh, even with, with non-beating heart. So uh, to take it while the patient on ventilation or without ventilation, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need a beating heart for this. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Farouk? Uh, yeah, Dr. Munna, I just want to ask, as you said that uh, in this regarding organ donation, uh, I just want to ask that if patient has signed the this card, organ donation card, and father is not uh, willing, so softly we will just inform him that due to law, his son has signed the card, so we are about to take the organs. Is it like that? Uh, you never say like that. Uh, because this is very crude way okay. and as I mentioned before to Dr. Muhammad uh, despite being a legal document you should respect the family uh, feelings and you mentioned to him uh, imagine you are going to make his last wish comes true imagine you are going to inspire his life uh, in the okay. lives of others uh, why don't you think about and we can consider and you can discuss the issue further with the transplantation team they can relieve few worries uh, so uh, in such condition you don't enter in such confrontation with the patient close closest relative the father or okay. the son or wife for example and say to him okay. no i have a legal document and i have the right no no you shouldn't do like this uh what about okay. dr murtada okay. asking thank about you. what about thank telling? yes thank you uh, Dr. Murtada asking about telling the father about doing hepatitis B, C, and HIV. You just mention, uh, if you want to mention, we have to recheck if uh, there is any cancer or blood borne bugs. Uh, not more than this. You don't have to enter into details. This is medical details for you and for discussion with the examiner if there is discussion. Uh, otherwise, no, it is not uh, essential to mention. Or if you can, you want to mention, just brief it. Hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I can share with you the next scenario uh, if you are ready to um, uh, do it. Anyone want to do the next case? Yes, doctor. Me, Sorry. Uh, who am I talking to? Doctor. Doctor Muhammad. Doctor Muhammad. Ahmed. Uh, okay. Um. <coughs> this is a scenario. Uh, you can read it. Uh, Mr. Singer, 68 years old, Jim Silver. Yes. Has long history of. Uh, Mr. Samir, 60 years, uh, 68 years old gentleman, admitted with pneumonia. He has long history of COPD, despite receiving <laughs> appropriate treatment. But his condition has been deteriorating over the last few months. Uh, over the last few days, sorry, and he started to be drowsy. The medical team decided not to ventilate him. Your task uh, to discuss with his son, Mr. Ahmad, about the condition of his dad and the medical team decision and uh, manage his concerns. <laughs> Hello? You are ready? I didn't hear anything. Sorry. Uh, is the scenario available on the screen? I think I have a connection. 
Uh, Mr. Samir, 68 yeah. years old gentleman, admitted with pneumonia. He has long history of COPD. Despite receiving appropriate treatment, his condition has been deteriorating over the last few days. He started to be drowsy. Uh, the medical team decided not to ventilate him. Your task to discuss with him about the condition of his dad and medical team decision and manage his concerns. When you are ready, tell me, Dr. We're hearing you clearly, Dr. Mon. No problem. Yes. Uh, you are ready, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, Dr. Ahmed, are you I can proceed. Okay. We can start. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning. What, what's the name of the patient? So can, I, can you show the scenario, please, for the name? Yes, the sure. <laughs> Mr. Samir, and you are discussing with Mr. Ahmed, his son. Start? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, am I talking to Mr. Ahmed, the son of Mr. Samir, 60 years yes. of age? Yes, okay, hello, Mr. Ahmed. I'm Dr. Shazli, hello. one of the doctors here today. Um, I'm here to talk with you about your father's condition, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Um, Mr. Ahmed, I assume that you are the next of kin of Mr. Samir. Is it, this right? Yes, Dr. Amir, his son. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Ahmed. Um, Mr. Ahmed, do you need anybody else from the family to attend this meeting? No. Like your mother, if she's available? No, no, no. Your, your she's your dead. Sister? No. Sorry for that. Sorry for that, Mr. Ahmed. Um, what about your brothers and sister? You... No, 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 no. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Ahmed, if you don't mind, I'd like to initiate our meeting by asking you, what do you know so far about your father's condition? Um, you know, doctor, my father has been uh, suffering <laughs> from this bad asthma since more than... Uh, 40 years. Uh, his condition underwent times of ups and downs. Uh, he was admitted repeatedly in the hospital, uh, especially lately. Uh, and unfortunately, um, he was admitted this time with fever, and uh, they told us that there is bugs in his uh, chest. Uh, and uh, he was admitted in the ICU. Um, I'm not sure, doctor. I can see that his condition is deteriorating, and I'm really anxious about his condition. He, he uh, is not fully conscious, doctor. He cannot recognize me. Um, I'm anxious about the progress of his condition. So uh, would you please tell me what exactly is the situation right now? OK. Sorry for that, Mr. Ahmed. And uh, I'm really uh, very sorry to tell you some bad news. Um, yes, you're right. Your father condition is deteriorating. He, he got now what's called respiratory failure. That means that he cannot breathe normally. 
and he got what chest infection, severe chest infection. And um, yes. he's not responding well to the treatment and the medications we are giving him. Oh. And um, yeah, as you told, as you told me, and as you saw, I thank you that you saw him recently, right? Yes. His uh, conscious level is deteriorating. Yes. Yes, and, I noticed uh, this. Doctor. And this sign of a severe, uh, as I told you, respiratory failure, which means that he cannot breathe anymore by himself. And uh, in this, in thus, some of these cases, we usually attach the patient to what's called breathing machine, which we call respirator or ventilator. Oh yes. Um, have you have you ever experienced this with your father before? Yes, um, actually, he has been uh, connected to this machine six months back. It was hard time, I believe. For how long did he stay in ICU on, or in this machine? Uh, about two months. Okay. So. Um, he, as, you, as you know, that he suffered a lot uh, recently from these attacks of, uh, of his bad uh, pneumonias and bad uh, chest, and chest condition. So the treating team, which is led by our consultant, uh, decided not to attach him anymore to breathing machine or the respirator. Oh, but is he going to manage it to recover by himself if he's not connected to this machine? You, uh, you are telling me that he is not responding to the medication and his condition is deteriorating. This machine is important for him. Okay, I appreciate your concern, Mr. Ahmed, but uh, our, uh, the, our plan and our management is for your father's comfort and welfare. You know, and you already experienced that before, that the breathing machine may prolong his life, but in itself, it may cause some sort of suffering to him. And it's not without complications itself. It may cause also some complication. The breathing machine may also cause some complication. Yes, it saves the lives of a lot of patients every day, but sometimes, especially in the conditions like your father's condition, when Already the lungs are already are very much damaged and it's not is with frequent admissions and he's suffering a lot recently from his lungs. We think that prolonging his life is just prolonging his suffering. Oh if you, you mean anything. that you are going to leave him to die, Doctor? Mr. Ahmed, according to our our opinion and our this and our consultant decision. Oh, doctor, your task. Yes. We think this is the best decision for him. We don't. I don't. The think best decision to leave him. him die. Sometimes, this kind of decision is for decrease the patient's suffering. I don't think that you. The latest admission, as you told me, he stayed on the mechanical ventilator for two months. Yes. And I think that you noticed his suffering during this time. And even I think, and I, I'm sure that you and the rest of the family also suffered a lot during this time. Yes. And I, I think that you agree with me that we all want the best for him, right? Yes, sure. But uh, the best was he, for him not to leave him die, doctor. You know, he's my father. I appreciate Concern, Mr. Ahmed, and I can only imagine what you're passing through right now. I know that it's difficult for you to hear this from me, and it's difficult for me also to tell this to you. But sometimes you have to take hard decisions for the for the best for the best welfare of our patients. I think, doctor, uh, giving him a chance. Uh, you know, uh, last time the doctors told me, like you. Uh, that this machine has many complications and there are many bad effects, but he managed and passed it. So why don't we give him a chance? Uh, 
I mean, if he's going to die, if he's if he are not put on this machine, then you should put it on it in it. This can apply to to patients who usually don't have a lot of what's called extirpation, that's called not a lot of frequent attacks. But in your father's condition, his lung is already severely damaged and he has a lot of frequent attacks recently. And sooner or later, he will not be able to, go, to recover from this attack. So our decision now, we're not going to stop treatment for him, we're going to keep giving him antibiotics, we're going to give him supportive care. But only when it comes to the mechanical ventilation, we prefer not to give him mechanical ventilation to decrease his suffering. Sometimes death, I know that's very difficult to the family to hear that, but, and it's very difficult also for medical team to discuss that with the family. But sometimes death is a, a comfort, relief from the pain and suffering with him. With your patient's experience. If he is your father, the doctor, are you going to take the same decision? If he's my father, I leave the decision to the medical team, Mr. Ahmed. Believe me that. I know. It's very difficult, doctor. Yes, Mr. Ahmed, sorry. You can proceed, Mr. Ahmed, sorry for interruption. And just. Um, I just want you to do anything, but do not stay and looking for my father while dying. I wouldn't accept something like this, doctor. You are doctors. You are tasked to uh, keep his life, keep his safety, not to wish death for him. We didn't complain of caring after him. We are the person who already suffer, but we are not complaining about this. We want to keep him among us. So I think giving him the best chance is the best for him. Mr. Ahmed, um, I, your, your concern is much appreciated and much respected. But can I ask some few questions, if you don't mind asking them, please? Yes, before please. Before responding to, this, to your concern. Um, uh, does your father has any kind, any kind of advanced directives for living well? No. Did he assign any, uh, you or, any, or anybody else with the lasting power of attorney? Hello? Hello? No. Yes. Did, did you assign to yes, anybody else you. the lasting power of attorney? No. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Ahmed, regarding your concern and your questions. Uh, yes, doctor. I'm concerned about keeping uh, my dad on the... Yes. Yes? Uh, I, I'm concerned about keeping my dad on this machine, doctor. I'm considered to do anything to keep my dad uh, life. I know. Mr. Ahmed, I think that we all agree that we want the best for your father, right? Our, 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 yes. our mission as treating team is the best well-being and the best welfare of the patient and to treat him as if we can. But if you cannot treat him, then our mission is to decrease his suffering I know this is very difficult for the family and you are pleased by having him whether in any status, but sometimes... In case I asked you to maintain this machine, doctor, to keep him on the machine, are you going to do it or not? Uh, it's not only my decision, Ms., uh, Mr. Ahmed. It's a, a consultant decision and multidisciplinary team decision. Usually there are two doctors who decide this at least two consultants to decide that this patient were not going to go with any invasive management, any invasive procedures to him, like the mechanical ventilation. Yes. So, and this, all these decisions are for the welfare and well-being of our patients. Sometimes, regardless of what the family think about, I know it's very hard to say this, but sometimes the family are, they cannot take a proper decision for the well-being of their patients. So it's better to leave some kind of decisions to the treating, to the treating team because they are very well experienced and well informed about the conditions more than the family. Because the family usually, the emotions and the empathetic empathy 
usually intervene with the appropriate decision plan. Okay, doctor. Mr. Ahmed, do you have any other concern you'd like us to address? No, thank you. No. Uh, do you want any, me to discuss this again with any part of your family? No. You, do you need any cup of tea or cup of water, for example? No, thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Ahmed. Okay, thank you. Can, 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 okay. Mm. Time is up or what? Time up, خلاص, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> طيب, uh, it was better not to take the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> يعني you were doing perfect الحقيقة لغاية the family cannot take the proper decision this is a fatal worse يا دكتور فتحي don't mention this ever don't judge the patient decision or family decision you should respect it uh, but you should show him how miserable is his life and how is the medical decision is the best in his condition so uh, let's revise together uh, how to tackle a case of to ventilate or not. Uh, first of all, you should mention to him, um, you asked about you are in the next of kin, it's okay. Uh, do you want anyone to attend the meeting with you? This question asked if you only, only if you are talking to the patient. If you are talking to a relative, you are going to breach the patient confidentiality. So you are breaching the confidentiality to the one who take, took permission or the next of kin only. So you don't have to ask him, you want to bring your mother or your sisters or brother or some. He doesn't have to because he is discussing, he is not discussing his own condition. He is discussing condition of another one. Clear? So uh, this is the um, first uh, thing. You, didn't ha you don't have to ask him to bring someone else because you are not taking talking to the patient uh, you start to inform him about um, or you ask him about how much you know and you did this perfectly and you rectify uh, you uh, mentioned that you are right uh, he has been suffering from this bad asthma bad asthma since long time bad asthma is a terminology said uh, non-medical terminology for COPD uh, for a long time and his condition was deteriorating over the uh, few last few days um, and uh, this deterioration caused by uh, these pugs which is called pneumonia take care pneumonia is a medical term the pugs in his chest which causes a deterioration of his uh, condition so uh, after reviewing uh, his treatment and his response despite he's taking the full medication he didn't show the expected response he started to show signs of um, deterioration you don't have to mention respiratory failure because you don't have figures uh, and as much as you can be away from uh, medical terminology as i mentioned uh, but he showed the signs of deterioration uh, i'm sorry to tell you that but i have some bad news at some point or at a time his breathing may stop because of this deterioration cause uh, accumulation of um, gases toxic gases in his body he's, he's not able to get rid of them this affect his consciousness causes his drowsiness and also um, at a time he may not be able to breathe in a proper way he may need assistance by a device called lung machine or ventilator if you explain it once, خلاص, it's okay to use the terminology after this, but you have to explain it as you did. خلاص, um, this lung machine helped to wash out this toxic gas from his body and recover his condition. But uh, this, do you have any previous experience with this machine before? Have your father had, had been connected to this machine before? I want to explain to you the pros and cons of putting him on this machine before telling you the medical decision. Uh, first of all, this machine, as I told you, going to wash out these toxic gases from his blood. But in order to take this decision, we should have some criteria which give us hope that he will be able to be easily disconnected from this machine and his lung will be able to work properly after that because we cannot 
keep him on the machine for a long time. This mistake putting, uh, doing a hole in his throat uh, to put this machine uh, in it because we cannot maintain this machine um, in his mouth for a long time. Uh, another issue, this, despite being under care, but him at risk of um, getting some pugs, whether in his lungs or in his body from prolonged uh, recumbency. Um, there are some other issues like having clots in his blood channels and other uh, complication that despite efforts to prevent them can occur, which can seriously harm his health. So in order to take such serious decision, we have to know some issue about the um, condition of your father prior to the admission or before admission. Uh, would you tell him me if he is still smoking? Uh, can he uh, ambulate at home? Uh, can he is he able to take care at, uh, after himself? With whom he live? Uh, is he uh, is he the one taking care after himself or need someone to take care after himself? Uh, after him, uh, is he able to go around do sh do shopping or practicing some enjoying life sports? Um, or doing some hobbies, do you think he is enjoying his life? Uh, what about his mood? Do you think he was happy by the pattern of life he was living? Uh, do you think he enjoyed the period that he was admitted before and was on this connected to this machine? Uh, had he left any advanced directive or living will stating that he doesn't want to be put on this machine? And if not, do you think if he is conscious not right now with us and able to take a decision, will he take the decision to be put on this machine again? Uh, also, I'd like to ask you uh, how frequent has he been admitted to the hospital? Uh, how many times he has been admitted to the um, uh, intensive care unit in the last year? Uh, how many times he need uh, assistance by machine or devices? Is he using, uh, using long-term oxygen therapy at home? And for how many hours? Uh, these items are very important to stress on in uh, deciding to ventilate or not because it measure what is called the quality of life, quality of life. So the next step to mention, I think your father was not enjoying a good quality of life. And I think it is better of him to offer a dignifying uh, life. The remaining part of his life will uh, live without pain or suffering. We are going to give him all medication apart from this ventilation. Uh, because we believe as a medical team that this is going to prolong his suffering. And you should know that the outcome and the difficulty of separation from the machine is more uh, worse with the, with the next, with the second, uh, in the second time than the first. So how do you feel about this? Uh, I believe you don't want your father to be suffering and you don't want him to uh, live uh, in a good shape, uh, you don't, I appreciate that everyone of us want uh, their family and their beloved around them, but we also want them to be in a good health. Mute the mic, please. Uh, it's not me, Dr. Amuna, it's somebody else, somebody else. Uh, can, you, uh, can, you, can, can, can you, can you meet him? Can you meet him, please? Can you meet him? Dr. Ali Adina. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so, um, what do you think about this? I think you have to uh, reconsider, especially your father hasn't any uh, advanced directive or living will, so the condition uh, depends on the medical team decisions or situation. And I assure you that we are doing what is in his best interest. Uh, so how do you feel about this? Start to explore. Usually before, the, uh, if you are um, in a conflict with uh, the patient or the relative in an interview, start to show him how, how bad is his life 
in these circumstances and what is the benefit of not doing or doing the test very important to declare the pros and cons so uh, just to summarize what I said uh, you start by informing how in the father pre-morbid uh, at the ventilation uh, First of all, inform him about the condition of his father. It is deteriorating, not improving despite treatment. Uh, and the, con the full treatment, and despite this show no signs of improvement. Um, I'm sorry, he is ill, uh, that he may pass away soon if not supported by a machine. Uh, to breathe, which is called the ventilator or breathing machine or lung machine, any terminology you want, but you have to explain it. Uh, in order to advise you, uh, I need to discuss with you uh, some issue about this. And the main issue to discuss the pre-morbid at home. Uh, activity of daily living, exercise, tolerance, mood, uh, the condition of COPD. Is he still smoking, using long-term oxygen therapy? How many hours uh, per day? This is in the, at home. In the hospital, how frequent his admission during the last year? ICU admission, how frequent has, been, uh, ha has he been intubated before? Uh, was it difficult to wean and for how long he maintained on the ventilation? Then uh, talk about the ventilation, uh, um, the options, uh, other than ventilation to take, put him on a face mask and non-invasive ventilation. Um, they are likely to fail. There is a risk of death. Uh, pros, discuss the pros and cons of ventilation. Okay, then summarize uh, and keep um, uh, a good way of conversation with your patient. Don't try ever to incite your patient. Don't try to stimulate or put yourself in confrontation with your patient or the relative of your patient, okay? Uh, thank you, Dr. Fathi, you did it well, but the last two minutes uh, shouldn't be given. <laughs> I regret giving them to you. Uh, like I'm, always, I'm always bad perfectly. at the endings. I'm always bad at the endings. La, 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 la. Uh, never criticize yourself. This is not true. But uh, uh, you did it perfect. Well, empathy was very good, by the way. Uh, end of life care uh, to resuscitate or not to ventilate or not uh, organ donation the worst scenarios ever you should uh, you you can um, face um, actually um, you did it very well um, but um, just we are correcting our mistakes not to do it in the exam inshallah. Uh, I'm sorry okay. to uh, I'm sorry but if, uh, there is some question I'd like to ask I'm sorry for asking yes, it sure. because I did not attend the meeting since the start I uh, stands for what Idea, concern, and expectations. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, in the paper, there is nine issues. In, in nine issues, did which the, are the uh, black squares or the tasks? Uh, Sorry. In the beginning of the in the beginning of the paper, can, can I ask? There is nine issues. What is after ice? Nine issues. What are these nine issues? Uh, and the items mentioned uh, after. Uh, the items, which yeah. are the tasks, uh, or the uh, black squares, black squares, or the uh, uh, circles. Tasks, three tasks. Uh, three tasks. Three, three tasks, uh, and, three uh, tasks. Uh, two and tasks, and the underline. Uh, the two tasks and the uh, underline, underline circles. Items, yes. Circles, oh, circles. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. No, no problem. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Mona. It was very useful. Thank you, Dr. Mona. It was very useful the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you for your sharing. Thanks, for Dr. Muhammad, for sharing. Uh, any other questions or comments? Hmm? Perfect, Dr. Mona. Perfect, Dr. Mona. Very, very informative. Very, very informative. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mona. Very, very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dekatra, for attending. Uh, I hope it was um, adding more for you. Uh, Inshallah, we'll announce about our next meeting. Dr. Rida uh, will uh, upload the lecture, Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah. Inshallah.